So what if you were the same artist, same experience level, same skill level, but just with loads more confidence? Would your work turn out better? Does confidence itself add something to your drawings? And I'm gonna argue that it does and then tell you how to get a little bit of that confidence. So my name's Kenzo and this is Love Life Drawing. Now, the first thing is confidence is essential to line quality. I think that's obvious, beautiful lines feel like confident lines, tentative lines are less appealing. And line quality, it's a lot based on your muscle memory, which you just develop with practice and experience, but an equally big factor is your mindset as you put the lines down. It's based on your confidence. Confidence also means that you have the guts to filter out the details. Let's say you're drawing a figure, you're going to life drawing. There's so many details, so many nuances in the figure. You have the, the confidence, the belief to filter that stuff out because you know that your version is better than the literal truth. You don't need all those details that reality is sending into your eyeballs. Your selective simplicity is going to be more appealing. That takes confidence and that's essential to life drawing. Confidence means that you're not going to straighten out the pose. So a classic beginner struggle is there'll be a dynamic pose, but because of that lack of confidence, the drawing ends up way less dynamic and way less interesting because we're afraid that the drawing is going to look a bit silly. So we want to make it more conservative. We want to make it safe. That itself messes up a lot of life drawings. And so confidence is going to help deal with that. Confidence also means you're gonna bring out the things about the figure that you find interesting. So you're actually gonna exaggerate the stuff that you really want to exaggerate that you find interesting, and that's gonna make the life drawing even better. Confidence means, let's say you're doing a painting. You're gonna let the colors bounce around your paintings. You know, it takes guts that this is a painting by Soroya, He's painted this person's chest with green. That takes guts instead of just using skin tone. But that's how, that's bringing out the interesting things that are happening in the color and the light. Confidence means you're gonna have the guts to use really dark darks, really strong values, pr bring out strong contrasts where they're needed. And where the contrast is not needed, you, where you can see some contrast, a little bit lighter here, a little bit darker here, but it doesn't help you with your drawing, you're gonna leave it out. So you can take the viewer's eyes and guide them to where you want them to look in the drawing. Like here, Lane has a flat shape of tone for the face because the drawing is all about this area here. With confidence, you can draw what you wanna draw instead of what you think everyone else wants you to draw. And then you can still believe in your drawings, even the ones that don't get as many likes as your other stuff on social media. If you're going out and doing a landscape painting or drawing a scene, you might have to change that scene or change that landscape you're looking at a little bit to help your composition. And it takes some confidence to be able to do that. Sometimes you're gonna need to design the shapes on your figure drawings to be more appealing, to be more interesting, and to be simpler. Sometimes you have to ignore the rules to make it more interesting. It takes confidence to draw terribly all day and then know that that doesn't reflect on your talent level or who you are as a person or as an artist. It was just how the drawings went that day. Whenever you're trying to build new skills, you have to go out of your comfort zone. And that means drawing worse than you know you could draw if you stayed in your comfort zone. So in order to learn new skills, you need to be kind of secure enough to do some drawings that are worse than you can normally do. And that requires confidence too. It takes confidence to take your time, even in a quick 60 second gesture drawing. By just simplifying your drawing even more, rather than rushing so that you can try and get in even more information and more details uh, in that time frame, It takes a little bit of confidence to accept and receive criticism, even when it's presented to you in a harsh way and to not get your hackles up as soon as someone says something negative about what you're doing. 
It takes confidence to draw with pen where you can't correct things. So we've seen the power of confidence, but how do you get it? It's like the chicken and egg. You have to be good to be confident, but you have to be confident to be good. So here are some tips to help you out. So firstly, only assess yourself based on your learning, not on how beautiful your drawings are. And that's something we say a lot on this channel, but let's get more specific. When you compare your drawings to how they were six months ago, are you applying the principles of drawing a little bit more now? So it might not all be coming together to make all the drawings beautiful yet. They might not be perfect drawings, but the point is, are you starting to bring in more of the principles of drawing and painting now versus before? Because here's a graph of learning versus beauty in your drawings. And this is kind of frustrating, but this is how it goes. The drawings don't get super beautiful for a while even though you are learning. So you don't get these clear signals that you're learning from how good your drawings are. So here's an analogy. If you're building a house and you say that's a hundred step process to build a house. Well, step one, the, the, <laughs> the house would kind of look like this. There's nothing there. And then step like 65 might look something like this. So step 65, it does look different, but it doesn't look great. It doesn't look much better but if you know what you're looking at you know that there's been huge steps forward to get to here because to get to here you need to have the architectural planning figured out you've hired some contractors you got permits you got connections to sewage and all this kind of stuff the foundations have been poured and you're much closer to the final stages where things really start to look amazing so earlier this year i started trying to learn to use color and i basically just drew stuff and just colored it in as best I could with no understanding. And then here, I was really learning a lot, trying to apply the things that I'd learned about color. And it didn't look much better. It kind of looked worse. I was getting confused. I was getting frustrated. But that's because I was in the battle of learning, right? And then something happened. I get, got to a tipping point where it started to come together and I started to do paintings more like this. And I started to see things improve. The second thing to do is to have faith in the power of purposeful practice. Be confident in the power of practice because that is something that everyone can be confident in. So you have to be honest with yourself. If you look back at your drawings from six months ago and nothing is changing, nothing in the drawings is changing, you're not applying the principles, uh, the fundamental principles of drawing more than you were before. Are you practicing consistently? And when you practice, are you pushing yourself outside your comfort zone and tackling these really difficult principles? You know, are you trying to figure out gesture? Are you trying to simplify forms, simplify value structures, working on your perspective? And if you aren't, then that's why that's happening. And if you do, if you do that consistently and you try to tackle these big drawing topics, consistently, maybe even daily for a year or two years, you're going to be able to draw in ways that you never thought possible. When you're actually drawing, if you're tentative and conservative while you're drawing, especially when you're drawing figures, it's really going to hold you back. And as you shy away from risks more and more, you're going to make yourself more risk averse. I mean, you're going to lose the gesture all the time because drawing gesturally means taking some risks. And people are really concerned that their drawings are going to go wrong and they're going to look silly. And that concern ruins tons and tons of drawings. You know, we're not doing brain surgery here. It's OK if our lines go wonky. If the drawing doesn't look right, you just do another one. So I don't mean that you just draw without thinking and just put down random marks without a care for what, you know, what they are or where they're going. I mean that if you see that interesting angle in the pose, you don't shy away from it, you lean into it. I mean that you put your marks down with bold movements of your arm decisively instead of little tentative movements because the bold decisive movements could fail and it could go wrong, but it doesn't matter. Like if you take risks and then nine times out of 10, it doesn't work, but one time out of 10, it does work then the risk was worth taking. And you just need to accept that bad drawings are gonna happen. They happen to everyone. 
and they don't reflect on you as an artist, they're just part of learning. Maggie has lost her frisbee, so I gotta go help her. Confidence is incredibly powerful for your drawings and you don't need to be drawing amazingly right now to feel confident. It's okay if the drawings go wrong, you can still feel confident about them and have you know, faith in what you're doing. You found it, Maggie. Oh, you found it. There should be another video up somewhere on the screen. Check it out and I'll see you guys in the next one.